The necklace glinted in the dim light of our bedroom, its delicate silver chain coiled like a serpent on my palm. I stared at it, my heart pounding, as the implications of its presence under our bed sank in. This wasn't mine. It wasn't Amy's. There was only one explanation, and it made me sick to my stomach. Mommy, can we have ice cream? Amy's voice floated up from downstairs, snapping me back to reality. I quickly shoved the necklace into my pocket. Just a minute, sweetie. I called back, trying to keep my voice steady. As I made my way downstairs, I could hear Doug in the kitchen, his laptop keys clicking away. He barely looked up as I entered. Hey, can you grab Amy some ice cream? I'm in the middle of this proposal, he said, not taking his eyes off the screen. I clenched my jaw, fighting back the urge to confront him right then and there. Sure, I managed, opening the freezer. Amy, come get your ice cream. Our three-year-old came bounding in, pigtails bouncing. Yay! Thanks, Mommy. As I scooped the ice cream, I watched Doug out of the corner of my eye. He seemed so normal, so unaffected. How could he sit there, acting like everything was fine, when there was clear evidence of his betrayal burning a hole in my pocket? Doug, we need to talk, I said, my voice low and tense. He finally looked up, his brow furrowing. Can it wait? I'm really swamped with this freelance gig. No, it can't, I snapped, louder than I intended. Amy looked up from her ice cream, her eyes wide. Doug sighed, closing his laptop. All right, what's so urgent? I glanced at Amy, then back at him. Not here. Upstairs. Now. He followed me reluctantly, leaving Amy to her dessert. As soon as we were in our bedroom, I whirled on him. Want to explain this? I hissed, pulling out the necklace. Doug's face paled, but he quickly composed himself. Where did you find that? Under our bed. Care to tell me who it belongs to? He ran a hand through his hair, a nervous habit I knew all too well. Mel, it's not what you think. Oh, really? I cut him off, because what I think is that you're cheating on me. Am I wrong? Of course you're wrong, he exclaimed, his voice rising. How could you even think that? I laughed bitterly. How could I not? You've been distant for months, always working on your laptop, and now this. I dangled the necklace in front of him. Don't lie to me, Doug. He reached for the necklace, but I snatched it away. It's, it's a gift, he stammered, for you, for our anniversary next month. I was hiding it. I stared at him, incredulous. Our anniversary isn't for another three months, Doug, and this isn't my style. You know that. His face fell, caught in the lie. Mel, please, it's not. Don't, I interrupted, holding up a hand. Just don't. I can't believe you do this to us, to Amy. As if on cue, Amy's voice drifted up from downstairs. Mommy? Daddy, where are you? Doug moved towards the door, but I blocked his path. We're not done here, I said, my voice low and dangerous. What do you want me to say? He asked, exasperated. The truth would be nice, I spat. Before he could respond, my phone buzzed. I glanced at it, seeing a text from Sophie, my mother. Everything okay, dear? You seemed off when we talked earlier. I looked back at Doug, his face a mixture of guilt and defiance. In that moment, I made a decision. This isn't over, I told him, pocketing the necklace. But right now, our daughter needs us. We'll finish this later. As I brushed past him to go downstairs, I couldn't shake the feeling that our lives had just changed irrevocably. The necklace weighed heavy in my pocket, a tangible reminder of the betrayal that threatened to tear our family apart. But as I plastered on a smile for Amy, I knew one thing for certain. I wasn't going down without a fight. The playgroup bustled with activity as I dropped Amy off, my eyes scanning the room for Lucy. She stood in the corner, her blonde hair perfectly styled, laughing with another parent. My stomach churned at the sight of her. Melissa, good morning, Lucy chirped, waving me over. I plastered on a smile and approached, Amy clinging to my leg. Morning, Lucy, I replied, my voice tight. Amy, sweetie, why don't you go play with your friends? As Amy scampered off, Lucy leaned in conspiratorially. I'm so glad you're here early. I wanted to chat about the upcoming parent-teacher meetings. I nodded, barely listening as she prattled on about schedules. My eyes were drawn to her neck, where a familiar silver chain glinted. My heart stopped. It couldn't be. Lucy, I interrupted, my voice trembling. That's a beautiful necklace. Where did you get it? She touched it, smiling. Oh, this old thing. It was a gift from... a friend. The room spun. I gripped the nearest table to steady myself. A friend? Lucy's smile faltered for a moment. Yes, just a friend. Is everything okay, Melissa? You look pale. I forced a laugh. I'm fine. Just tired, 
Listen, I've got to run. Work calls. I practically fled the playgroup, my mind racing. The necklace. Lucy. Doug. It all made horrible sense now. The day passed in a blur. I couldn't focus at work, my thoughts consumed by what I'd seen. By the time I picked up Amy and headed home, I was a bundle of nerves. Doug was already there when we arrived, playing with his phone on the couch. He looked up, smiling. Hey, how was your day? I ignored him, turning to Amy. Sweetie, why don't you go play, play in your room for a bit? Mommy and Daddy need to talk. Once Amy was upstairs, I rounded on Doug. I saw Lucy today, I said, my voice low and dangerous. He frowned. Okay? And? She was wearing the necklace, Doug, the one I found under our bed. The color drained from his face. Mel, I can explain. Don't you dare, I hissed. How long has this been going on? How could you do this to us? Doug stood, reaching for me. It's not what you think. Lucy and I were just... Just what? I spat. Friends? Is that why you're giving her jewelry? He ran a hand through his hair, pacing. It's complicated, Mel. I've been going through some things. Oh, spare me, I interrupted. What about what I've been going through? Working full-time, taking care of Amy, supporting your decision to freelance. And this is how you repay me? Doug's face hardened. Maybe if you weren't so focused on work all the time, you'd see what's really going on. I recoiled as if slapped. Are you seriously blaming me for your affair? It's not an affair, he shouted, then lowered his voice, glancing towards Amy's room. Lucy understands me. She listens. Tears stung my eyes. And I don't? Is that what you're saying? Before he could answer, my phone rang. It was Sophie, my mother. I answered, turning away from Doug. Mom, now's not a good time, I said, my voice shaky. Honey, what's wrong? Sophie asked, concern evident in her voice. I took a deep breath, glancing at Doug. He was watching me, his face a mixture of guilt and defiance. Everything, I whispered into the phone. Can you come over? I need you. As I hung up, Doug stepped towards me. Mel, please, let's talk about this. I held up a hand, stopping him. No, I'm done talking. My mother's coming over, and you're going to leave. I can't even look at you right now. He opened his mouth to protest, but something in my expression must have stopped him. Without another word, he grabbed his keys and left. As the door closed behind him, I sank to the floor, sobs racking my body. How had we come to this? And more importantly, what was I going to do now? The front door creaked open, and I hastily wiped my tears away. Sophie rushed in, her face etched with concern. Melissa, honey, what's going on? She enveloped me in a hug, and I crumbled against her. It's Doug, I choked out. He's... he's having an affair. Sophie stiffened. That no-good son of a... She caught herself, glancing towards Amy's room. Are you sure? I nodded, recounting the necklace incident and my confrontation with Doug. Sophie's face darkened with each word. I'll kill him, she muttered. Mom, please, I sighed. I need to figure out what to do next. Before she could respond, the front door opened again. Doug strode in, his jaw set. I thought I told you to leave, I hissed. This is my house too, Mel, he retorted. If we need to talk, Sophie stepped between us. You've got some nerve, Doug. He ignored her, focusing on me. Melissa, please, let me explain. Explain what, I snapped. How you've been lying to me, sneaking around with Amy's teacher? Doug's face flushed. It's not like that. Lucy and I, we connected. She understands the pressure I'm under. I laughed bitterly. Oh, the pressure you're under? What about me, Doug? I've been carrying this family while you chase your freelance dreams. That's not fair, he shot back. I'm trying to build something for us, for Amy's future. By sleeping with her teacher? Sophie interjected. Doug whirled on her. This doesn't concern you, Sophie. The hell it doesn't, she growled. That's my daughter and granddaughter you're hurting. I held up a hand, silencing them both. Doug, I want you out, tonight. His eyes widened. Mel, come on, we can work this out. Work what out? I asked, my voice trembling. The trust you've shattered? The family you've torn apart? Doug's shoulders sagged. I never meant to hurt you. It just happened. Things like this don't just happen, I spat. You made a choice. Now I'm making mine. A small voice interrupted us. Mommy? Daddy? We all turned to see Amy at the foot of the stairs, clutching her stuffed rabbit. Her eyes were wide with fear. Why is everyone yelling? She whimpered. I rushed to her, scooping her up. It's okay, sweetie. Mommy and Daddy were just having a grown-up talk. Doug approached us, reaching for Amy. I instinctively pulled back. Don't, I warned. His face crumpled. Mel, please. She's my daughter, too. 
Sophie stepped in, gently taking Amy from me. Come on, sweetheart, let's go make some hot chocolate while Mommy and Daddy finish talking. As they disappeared into the kitchen, I turned back to Doug. I want you gone by morning. You can see Amy, but it'll be on my terms. You can't do this, he protested. We need to think about what's best for Amy. I am thinking about Amy, I retorted. She deserves better than a father who lies and cheats. Doug's face hardened. Fine, if that's how you want to play it, I'll go. But this isn't over, Melissa. As he stormed upstairs to pack, I sank onto the couch, my head in my hands. How had we come to this? The man I'd loved, the father of my child, was now a stranger to me. Sophie returned, sitting beside me. He's leaving? I nodded, unable to speak. She squeezed my hand. You're doing the right thing, honey. It'll be hard, but you're strong. You'll get through this. I looked up at her, tears streaming down my face. What if I can't? What if I'm not strong enough? Sophie's eyes flashed with determination. Then I'll be strong for you. We'll face this together, Melissa. You're not alone. As Doug's footsteps echoed above us, packing his life into suitcases, I clung to my mother's words. I wasn't alone. And somehow, someway, I would find the strength to rebuild my life, for myself and for Amy. The house felt emptier without Doug, but I couldn't decide if that was a good or bad thing. Amy kept asking where Daddy was, and each time my heart broke a little more. I'd told her he was on a work trip, but I knew that excuse wouldn't hold for long. One afternoon, while Amy napped, I found myself drawn to Doug's home office. I hesitated at the door, my hand hovering over the knob. Did I really want to do this, to invade his privacy? But then I remembered the necklace, Lucy's smug face, and my resolve hardened. The room was a mess, papers strewn everywhere. I started with his desk drawers, rifling through documents and old receipts, nothing incriminating. His laptop sat on the desk, tempting me. I knew his password, or at least I thought I did. To my surprise, it worked. As I scrolled through his emails, my stomach churned. There were dozens of messages from Lucy, each more intimate than the last. They detailed meetups, shared jokes, and plans for the future. My future. Our future. I felt sick but it was a folder labeled Melissa that caught my eye. With trembling hands, I clicked it open. Inside were screenshots of text messages, our text messages. Every argument, every cold exchange meticulously documented, and below them, notes. Melissa overreacting again. Another late night at work, does she even care about this family? Tears blurred my vision. How long had he been planning this? Documenting our downfall? A noise from the hallway made me jump. I quickly closed the laptop, my heart racing. It was just Amy, stirring in her sleep. I slumped back in the chair, overwhelmed. I had my evidence now, but at what cost? The Doug I knew, the man I married, was truly gone. My phone buzzed, a text from Doug. Can we talk? I miss Amy. I ignored it, focusing instead on the laptop. I needed to document what I'd found before he had a chance to delete it all. With shaky hands, I began taking photos of the screen, capturing every damning email and note. As I worked, another text came through, this time from an unknown number. Hi, Melissa. It's Lucy. We need to talk about Doug. My blood boiled. The audacity of this woman. I typed out a scathing reply, then deleted it. No, I needed to be smarter than that. Instead, I wrote, Fine, meet me at Rosie's Cafe tomorrow at 2 p.m. Her reply was almost immediate. I'll be there. I set the phone down, my mind racing. What could Lucy possibly have to say? Was this a trap, or did she have information I needed? As if on cue, Amy's voice called out from her room. Mommy, where's Daddy? I closed my eyes, taking a deep breath. How much longer could I keep this charade up? How much longer should I? I went to Amy's room, sitting on the edge of her bed. Her innocent eyes looked up at me, full of trust and love. In that moment, I made a decision. Sweetie, I said softly. Daddy and Mommy are going through some grown-up problems right now, so, but I want you to know that we both love you very, very much. Amy's lower lip trembled. Is Daddy coming home? I pulled her close, fighting back tears. I don't know, baby. But no matter what happens, I promise I'll always be here for you. As I held my daughter, I steeled myself for what was to come. The meeting with Lucy, the inevitable confrontation with Doug, the painful process of untangling our lives. It wouldn't be easy, but looking at Amy... I knew it was necessary. Tomorrow, I'd face Lucy and whatever revelations she brought. But tonight I'd hold my daughter and find strength in her love. Because no matter what happened next, I knew one thing for certain. 
I'd fight with everything I had to protect our future, with or without Doug. The morning sun filtered through the curtains as I sipped my coffee, stealing myself for the day ahead. Amy was at preschool, and I had a mountain of work to tackle before my meeting with Lucy. The thought of facing her made my stomach churn, but I was determined to get answers. My phone buzzed, an unknown number flashing on the screen. Frowning, I answered, Hello, is this Melissa Thompson? A stern voice asked. Yes, this is she. Mrs. Thompson, this is Officer Jenkins from the City Police Department. I'm calling about your husband, Douglas Thompson. My heart stopped. What about Doug? Is he okay? There was a pause, heavy with unspoken dread. There's been an accident, ma'am. Your husband's car collided with another vehicle on Highway 16. He's been taken to Memorial Hospital. The room spun. I gripped the counter to steady myself. Is he, is he alive? Yes, ma'am, but his condition is critical. You should get to the hospital as soon as possible. I mumbled a thank you and hung up, my mind reeling. Doug. Accident. Hospital. The words swirled in my head, refusing to make sense. With shaking hands, I dialed Sophie. Mom, I choked out when she answered. I need you to pick up Amy from preschool. Doug's been in an accident. Oh, honey, she gasped. I'm on my way. Go to the hospital. I'll take care of Amy. The drive to Memorial was a blur. I parked haphazardly, rushing through the emergency room doors. A harried nurse directed me to the ICU waiting area, where a grim-faced doctor approached me. Mrs. Thompson? he asked. I nodded, unable to speak. Your husband is in surgery. He suffered severe internal injuries and a head trauma. The next twenty-four hours will be critical. I collapsed into a chair, my legs no longer able to support me. Will he, will he make it? The doctor's face softened. We're doing everything we can, but you should prepare yourself for the possibility. His voice voice faded as I spotted a familiar figure down the hall. Blonde hair, tear-streaked face, a bandage on her forehead. Lucy. Rage surged through me, momentarily displacing my fear. I stood, marching towards her. What are you doing here? I demanded. Lucy's eyes widened in panic. Melissa, I... I can explain. Explain what? I hissed. Why you're here? Why my husband is fighting for his life? She flinched, tears spilling down her cheeks. I was in the car with Doug. We were... we were going to tell you everything today. The world tilted on its axis. You were in the car? You caused this? No, she cried. It wasn't our fault. A truck ran a red light. Doug, he swerved to protect me. I staggered back, bile rising in my throat. Even in crisis, Doug had chosen her. A nurse approached, eyeing us warily. Miss Ellison, we need to check your concussion. I watched, numb, as Lucy was led away. She glanced back, her eyes pleading, but I turned away. I couldn't deal with her. Not now. Hours passed in a haze of coffee and hushed conversations. Sophie arrived, squeezing my hand and murmuring comforting words I couldn't process. All I could think about was Doug, lying on an operating table, his life hanging by a thread. Finally, the surgeon emerged, his face grave. Mrs. Thompson, your husband is out of surgery. He's stable. But I braced myself for the worst. There's been significant brain damage. We won't know the full extent until he wakes up, if he wakes up. The world narrowed to a pinpoint. If he wakes up, the words echoed in my head, a cruel taunt of what might never be. Can I see him? I whispered. The doctor nodded, leading me to Doug's room. I gasped at the sight of him, pale and still, surrounded by beeping machines. This broken man couldn't be my Doug, the father of my child, the center of my world for so long. As I sank into the chair beside his bed, taking his limp hand in mine, I was hit by a staggering realization. Despite everything, the betrayal, the lies, the pain he'd caused, I wasn't ready to let him go. Not like this. In that sterile hospital room, watching Doug's chest rise and fall with mechanical precision, I made a decision. Whatever happened next, whether he lived or died, I would face it head on. For Amy, for myself, and yes, even for Doug. Because some bonds, no matter how frayed, are too strong to break completely. The hospital corridor seemed endless as I made my way to Doug's room. It had been three days since the accident, and he'd finally regained consciousness. My emotions were a tangled mess of relief, anger, and dread. As I approached his room, I heard voices. One was Doug's, weak but unmistakable. The other was Lucy's. My blood boiled. I burst through the door, startling them both. Lucy jumped away from Doug's bedside, guilt written all over her face. Melissa, Doug croaked, his eyes widening. I can explain. Save it, I snapped. I turned to Lucy. Get out, now. 
She hesitated, looking at Doug. He nodded slightly, and she scurried past me, avoiding eye contact. Once we were alone, I faced my husband. He looked small and broken in the hospital bed, but I steeled my heart against pity. How long? I demanded. Doug closed his eyes, sighing. Six months. The admission hit me like a physical blow. Six months. Half a year of lies, of betrayal. Why? My voice cracked. Why her? Why throw away our family? He struggled to sit up, wincing in pain. I didn't mean for it to happen. Lucy, she understood me, made me feel alive again. And I didn't? Tears stung my eyes. What about Amy? Did you think about her at all? Guilt flashed across his face. Of course I did. I love Amy more than anything. Not enough to stay faithful to her mother, I spat. Doug reached for my hand, but I pulled away. Mel, please. I know I messed up, but this accident, it's made me realize what's truly important. I want to make things right. I laughed bitterly. Make things right? Doug, you were in that car with her. You were going to leave us. He shook his head vehemently. No, we were coming to talk to you, to confess everything. How noble of you, I said, my voice dripping with sarcasm. And now what? You expect me to forgive and forget? Doug's face crumpled. I'm asking for a chance, for Amy's sake, if nothing else. The mention of our daughter sent a fresh wave of pain through me. How would I explain this to her? A knock at the door interrupted us. It was Doug's doctor. Mr. Thompson, Mrs. Thompson, he greeted us solemnly. I have your latest test results. The atmosphere in the room shifted, tension crackling in the air. The head trauma has caused some complications, the doctor explained. There's a high probability of long-term cognitive and motor function impairment. The words hung heavy between us. Doug would need extensive care and rehabilitation. The implications were staggering. As the doctor continued explaining the prognosis, I felt the weight of responsibility settling on my shoulders. Despite everything, Doug was still Amy's father. Could I really walk away now? But then I remembered the betrayal, the lies, the secret meetings with Lucy. The life we'd built together was already in ruins. Did I owe him anything more? The doctor left, and silence fell over the room. Doug looked at me, his eyes pleading. Melissa, he whispered, I know I don't deserve it, but I'm begging you, don't give up on us. I stood there, torn between fury and compassion, between the vows we'd made and the trust he'd shattered. The future I'd imagined for us lay in pieces, and I had no idea how to put it back together, or if I even wanted to. I can't do this right now, I said finally, my voice trembling. I need time to think. As I turned to leave, Doug called out, Mel, wait, what about Amy? What do we tell her? I paused at the door, my hand on the knob. Without looking back, I replied, I'll figure it out, like I always do. Stepping into the hallway, I leaned against the wall, my legs weak. The enormity of the situation crashed over me. In a matter of days, my life had been turned upside down. Now I faced an impossible choice. Stay and try to rebuild what was broken, or walk away and start anew. As I made my way out of the hospital, one thought echoed in my mind. Whatever I decided, nothing would ever be the same again. The whispers started the moment I stepped into the grocery store. Eyes darted away when I looked up. Hushed conversations halted mid-sentence. News travels fast in a small town, and our scandal was the juiciest gossip in years. I grabbed a cart trying to ignore the stairs burning into my back. As I reached for a box of Amy's favorite cereal, a familiar voice made me freeze. Melissa? Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. I turned to face Linda, my next-door neighbor and longtime friend. Her eyes were filled with pity, and I felt my cheeks burn with humiliation. It's fine, Linda, I muttered, attempting a smile. We're managing. She touched my arm, her voice lowering. If you need anything, anything at all, just let me know. That Doug. I always thought he was too good to be true. I nodded, fighting back tears. Thanks. I appreciate it. As I hurried away, I overheard another shopper whisper, Can you believe it, with Amy's teacher of all people? My hands shook as I grabbed items off the shelves, desperate to finish an escape. But as I rounded the corner to the dairy aisle, I came face to face with Lucy. She looked terrible, pale, with dark circles under her eyes. When she saw me, she froze, terror flashing across her face. For a moment we just stared at each other. Then, something inside me snapped. How dare you show your face here? I hissed, advancing on her. Lucy backed away, hands raised. Melissa, please, I'm so sorry. Sorry? I laughed bitterly. You destroyed my family and you're sorry? 
By now, a small crowd had gathered, watching our confrontation with morbid fascination. Now, Lucy's eyes darted around, panicked. I never meant for any of this to happen. Doug and I. Don't you dare say his name, I spat. You have no right. Do you have any idea what you've done? To me? To Amy? Tears streamed down Lucy's face. I've lost everything, too. My job, my reputation. Good, I snarled. You deserve to lose it all. Suddenly, Sophie appeared at my side, gently grasping my arm. Melissa, honey, let's go. This isn't the place. I shook her off, my rage building. No, Mom, she needs to hear this. Everyone needs to hear this. I turned to the gathered crowd, my voice rising. You want to know the truth? My husband, the man I trusted with my life, my future, betrayed me with this woman. Amy's teacher. And now he's lying in a hospital bed, broken and changed forever, because they were sneaking around behind my back. Gasps and murmurs rippled through the onlookers. Lucy looked like she wanted the ground to swallow her whole. Melissa, please. She whimpered. I'm leaving town. You'll never have to see me again. Running away? I sneered. Of course you are. That's what cowards do. Sophie tugged at my arm more insistently. That's enough, Melissa. Think of Amy. The mention of my daughter's name was like a bucket of cold water. I deflated, suddenly aware of the spectacle I'd created. You're right, I said quietly. Then to Lucy, go. Leave, and pray I never see you again. As Lucy fled, leaving her cart abandoned, I turned to face the crowd. Their expressions ranged from shock to sympathy to poorly concealed excitement at the drama. Show's over, I announced, my voice cracking. Go back to your shopping. Sophie guided me out of the store, leaving our groceries behind. As we stepped into the parking lot, my phone buzzed. It was the hospital. Mrs. Thompson? Your husband is asking for you. There's been a complication. I closed my eyes, feeling the last threads of my composure unraveling. How much more could I take? Sophie squeezed my hand. What is it, honey? I looked at her, tears finally spilling over. It's Doug. I have to go back to the hospital. As we drove away from the store, leaving behind a wake of gossip and scandal, I realized I was at a crossroads. The life I knew was gone, shattered beyond repair. Now I had to decide. Would I let this break me, or would I find the strength to forge a new path for myself and Amy? With each mile that passed, my resolve hardened. Whatever happened next, I would face it head on. For better or worse, this was my story now, and I was determined to write my own ending. The courtroom felt suffocating as I sat across from Doug, his lawyer whispering urgently in his ear. My own attorney, Sarah, squeezed my hand reassuringly. You've got this, Melissa, she murmured. Remember, we have all the evidence. He can't weasel out of this. I nodded, steeling myself as the judge entered. This was it, the culmination of months of legal battles, emotional turmoil, and sleepless nights. As the proceedings began, I found myself drifting, remembering the night everything changed. The necklace under the bed, the confrontation at the hospital, the scandal that rocked our small town. It felt like a lifetime ago. Doug's lawyer presented their case first, painting a picture of a remorseful husband, a victim of circumstance. I clenched my fists, fighting the urge to scream out his lies. When it was our turn, Sarah methodically laid out the evidence, the emails, the text messages, the financial records showing Doug's secret expenditures on Lucy. With each revelation, I watched Doug shrink in his seat, the facade of confidence crumbling. Finally, the judge turned to me. Mrs. Thompson? Do you have anything you'd like to add? I stood, my legs shaky, but my voice strong. Your Honor, for years I believed in the sanctity of my marriage, in the man I thought Doug was, but that man doesn't exist. The real Doug betrayed not just me, but our daughter Amy. He risked everything, our family, our future, for a fleeting affair. I turned to face Doug directly, meeting his eyes for the first time in months. I'm not here for revenge. I'm here for justice, for myself and for Amy. We deserve better than the lies and betrayal you've subjected us to, and now we're taking back our lives. As I sat down, a hush fell over the courtroom. The judge nodded solemnly, then delivered her verdict. The settlement was more than I dared hope for. Primary custody of Amy, a substantial alimony, and child support that would ensure Amy's future was secure. Doug's face crumpled as the judge detailed his visitation rights, supervised only, given his recent erratic behavior. As we left the courtroom, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. It wasn't just the legal victory, it was the knowledge that I'd stood up for myself, for Amy, for the life we deserved.
Outside, Sophie was waiting with Amy. My daughter ran to me, and I scooped her up, holding her tight. Mommy, why are you crying? She asked, wiping a tear from my cheek. I smiled through the tears. These are happy tears, sweetheart. Mommy just won a big game. Sophie hugged us both. I'm so proud of you, Melissa. You've been so strong through all of this. As we walked to the car, I spotted Doug across the parking lot. Our eyes met briefly, and for a moment, I saw a flicker of the man I'd once loved. But then he turned away, shoulders slumped, defeated. That night, after tucking Amy into bed, I sat on the porch swing, gazing at the stars. The future stretched out before me, uncertain, yes, but full of possibility. My phone buzzed with messages of support from friends and coworkers. The community that had once whispered behind my back now rallied around me. I'd emerged from the scandal not as a victim, but as a survivor. As I scrolled through the messages, I paused on one from Linda, my neighbor. Melissa, you're an inspiration to all of us. If you ever want to share your story, let me know. It could help so many women. I considered her words a seed of an idea taking root. Perhaps there was a way to turn this pain into purpose to help others facing similar battles. The porch door creaked open and Sophie joined me, handing me a glass of wine. To new beginnings, she said, clinking her glass against mine. I smiled, feeling a sense of peace wash over me. To new beginnings, I echoed. As we sat in comfortable silence, I realized that this wasn't just an ending. It was a beginning. The road ahead would be challenging, but for the first time in months, I felt ready to face it. I had survived the storm, emerged stronger, and now, with Amy by my side and a support system I never knew I had, I was ready to write the next chapter of our lives. On my own terms, with my head held high, the future was mine to shape, and I intended to make it a bright one. For myself, for Amy, and for any woman who needed to know that there was life and triumph after betrayal.